Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. Today on the bench, we've got the Seneca Dragonfly Mark II. What's so special about this gun, you might ask? Well, it's a multi-pump pneumatic, meaning on board, you have a pump mechanism that allows you to fill a cylinder with air under pressure. And then when you pull the trigger, you release that air, and that's what propels the pellet down the barrel out to the target. Unlike a Springer, which has a piston that's moving forward and on the fly compressing that air, you don't have the unique recoil forces that Springer and gas ram rifles have. This has a little more sedate shooting cycle and it's easier to shoot with less practice. We're gonna go through um, just kind of the features of the rifle as well as do some accuracy testing out at 20 yards. And we'll see if, uh, in the end, this is a rifle I would recommend either to you or maybe what you want is a rifle for your buddy, your kids, your boss, uh, or somebody else in your life who's asking you, because you've got some expertise, uh, what you'd recommend they get. This comes in at a really good price point. Uh, this was sent to me by Pyramid Air, and I appreciate their support of the channel. Uh, they also sent over this Leapers 3-9 to nine adjustable objective. It's got a front parallax that goes down to, it's marked at 6, but uh, I think really closer to 5, maybe even 4, um, and possibly closer than that. Um, it's a good scope at a great price point and a really good match uh, for this air gun. When you order your Dragonfly, order a bottle of this RWS Chamber Lube. It comes with this sweet pinpoint, hopefully you can see that, it's like a giant syringe on the end of the nipple here. Um, and this allows you to really give pinpoint uh, oiling to the rifle. And in the manual, they talk about the need to oil the rifle. So you're going to need to oil the rifle, and of course with everything air gun, I always use only silicone oil, uh, but you wanna check the manual on that. They identify, and they actually give you a nice picture of where to oil. So you're gonna do drops here where the linkages connect up, okay, in the middle here, and this allows you to get just where you need and not a whole bunch of extra which really just gums everything up and then in here a little bit just i'm just putting drops in here where the metal's connecting and then there is a felt wiper right in here and that can take a little bit of oil and then you're all set and they say you do it about every 500 shots uh, <laughs> i read it twice it's not 500 pumps, it's 500 shots. So it's not like you're gonna be doing this all the time, um, but every couple of shooting sessions, depending on how big your shooting sessions are, um, we're doing chrono work right now, so I'm pumping quite a bit, um, but it's, it's not a big add-on and it's gonna extend the length of your rifle. So you wanna make sure you read about it and then actually do it. The loading and pumping procedure on the rifle is dead simple, okay? It involves cocking with the bolt action, nice and smooth. And once that's cocked, you can pump and put air. If you pump before you cock the rifle, no air goes into the rifle. It doesn't hold anything and you're just going through the motions. So it is possible to cock it on an empty chamber if you feel like you need to, you can put the safety across it. You just have to remember to go back and put a pellet into it because it won't fire if you don't put a pellet into it. Now, the rifle is magazine fed or can be magazine fed. It comes with a magazine and a single shot tray. I'm using the single shot tray today so I can very easily pull it back, put it in later, close it up. If you did this with the magazine, you would be loading pellet after pellet into the firing position, eventually you're gonna jam up the barrel. So you just have to pay attention to that. Don't cock it twice, okay? 
All right, so I have it cocked, safety's on, and now I'm gonna pump, okay? You can go as many as 15. One of the things you're gonna have to figure out about the rifle is how many times do you wanna pump it every time you shoot? Because every different level of pumping is gonna give you progressively more power out the muzzle. And I'll be talking today about those power numbers that I got. So watch the pumping action. Open, closed. You wanna stop at three, you stop at three. You wanna stop at seven, you stop at seven. You wanna stop at 11, I'll show you the numbers I got for that. You wanna go all the way to the top, I'm gonna to give you that information too. Here's the thing. This is the magic about this particular pump action gun. It doesn't get harder the more you pump it. It's reasonably easy to pump. I wish I had a way to set up, I don't know, like my trigger scale so I could tell you exactly how much cocking effort it requires to, to work that pump. I see guys who are able to put that in their reviews on their brake barrels, how much cocking effort it is. I don't know if they just go with what the manufacturer says. I don't have a way to reliably uh, test that. I will say it is not hard to cock and it doesn't get appreciably harder as you pump it more. And in terms of living up to manufacturer's claims, um, doing the testing today, we were doing five shot groups with 15 pumps in it. And we were trying to do it in a relatively short amount of time because we have decent weather and you got to capitalize on that. And frankly, got some other shooting I want to do today. It's more fun pulling the trigger than pumping. But it did not kill my arm in a whole day of serious testing. And that's saying something about the design of the rifle and actually the implementation. It's pretty amazing. I remember as a kid pumping that rifle 10 times. And, mm, this does not have that. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons why this is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know, let's call it technology. I think it's patented. Pretty cool technology. So here's the information we got on velocity. I measured the velocity of the pellet using the LabRadar chronograph. And for testing, we were using the JSB 18.13 grain pellets. As you'll see in a minute, we measured at 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15 pumps to give you sample data at each power level. If you can't give me a thumbs up for all that work, I don't know what I have to do to earn one. With three pumps, a five shot group gave us an average of 434 feet per second with a high of 437 and a low of 429, which is an eight foot per second extreme spread. And we had a 3.32 standard deviation. Two extra pumps grabbed us almost 100 extra feet per second for an average of 530 feet per second. There was only a 4 feet per second extreme spread, and we got a standard deviation of around 2 feet per second. Two more pumps and another 55 feet per second. Seven pumps gave us an average of 586 feet per second. We had an extreme spread of three feet per second and a standard deviation of one and a half. Two more pumps yielded a slight diminish in the return going up about 40 feet per second to 627. The spread was just a little bit higher too with eight feet per second and a standard deviation hovering right around three. The Dragonfly Mark II was really impressive at 11 pumps. The 655 feet per second average was great, but the, the extreme spread was two and a half, giving us about a one and a quarter foot standard deviation. By the time we added two more pumps to get to 13, we were only getting just a little over 20 more feet per second. 
the spread started to grow just a little bit compared to what it had been at about 9 feet per second, which gives a 3.7 feet per second standard deviation. So what do you get if you go all the way to the top? 15 pumps gives you an average of about 687 feet per second. A little bit higher extreme spread and therefore higher standard deviation, but still pretty good, especially considering you're not talking about a high dollar PCP. All right, I'm not gonna be able to get away without talking about the trigger. Um, I would just say it's a long rolling trigger and you know, long, okay, you know, it's, it's not like it's a whole inch or anything like that, but um, it, you are gonna pull it and it is gonna get to the end and then it's gonna break. Um, this is what I find really interesting about it. I took out my uh, Lyman trigger gauge and I thought, well, let's, let's just pump it three times. I've been pumping and pumping and pumping this thing, doing the accuracy testing and setting it up and getting the scope zeroed and um, working through some of the other issues I talk about in the review. Um, so let, let's pump it three times, see what happens. It broke at two pounds, 11 ounces. That's not bad at all. Um, for uh, I've, I've fired a lot of guns that I was like, man, if I had a sub three pound trigger, I'd be really happy on that gun. Um, it's not an unpleasant trigger. I have arthritis in my trigger finger. It's not hard to pull. It's just long. And, you know, it doesn't come to a wall and then break. It just goes and then it breaks. Um, so I thought, well, maybe as you pump it up, it gets harder to pull. Um, and this is where things got interesting. I pumped it five times. Then I pumped it seven times. Then I pumped it nine times. And then I pumped it 11 times. And each time when I pumped it more, the trigger pull, the tr trigger weight of the pull was less. At 11 pumps, it was two pounds, three ounces. Not believing it, I did it again. I ran the whole series again. Pretty much exactly the same result. For whatever reason, um, the more you pump it, the, the less it actually takes to pull the trigger in terms of weight. It doesn't get any shorter, but it's, uh, it's a lighter trigger, I guess, as you pump it more. I was pretty surprised by that. So I'm going to say it's somewhere around two and a half pounds, depending on how much you pump it up, um, which isn't a bad trigger at all. And if you've got kids that are going to shoot this, um, the pumping effort isn't hard and um, certainly the trigger pull isn't difficult. It's a lightweight gun. Um, it's very narrow and I don't think youth shooters would have trouble at all. In fact, I'd have been ecstatic about something like this when I was a kid. I grew up on a multi-pump gun and um, uh, there's a little nostalgia here for me shooting this. All right. Safety on the rifle is a really simple push in. Push it from the right with your trigger finger. Now safety's off. It's absolutely resettable. You go like back and forth. Little bit of noise, pretty positive, and definitely gets the job done. Um, because this is a pneumatic rifle, meaning it's not a spring piston, you can dry fire it. So in this case, um, it is pumped up, but there's no pellet in it. I'm able to just, and I want to point in a safe direction, obviously, with a good back step. Put the safety. Doesn't hurt the rifle at all. So if you're ever in doubt, did I load it or didn't I? And you're worried, well, I don't want to dry fire it. Actually, it's the rifle it's okay to do that with. So I want to talk about the noise that the rifle makes. And uh, I may actually pull out the old noise meter to give you this because it's really pretty stunning. So the rifle comes with its own adapter to connect to half inch UNF threads. And in today's case, I've got the FX branded Donnie FL moderator on here, um, which I found in just my initial playing around, did a nice job of taming it when you're pumping it 15 times. Cause it does get pretty loud at 15 times. Um, I started doing chronograph work and I'm using a lab radar, which uses a microphone to tell the lab radar when to pulse the radar to give you a signal. What I found was when I was only doing three pumps, 
Um, and when I was only doing five pumps, the rifle is too quiet to trip the microphone on the lab radar if I put the Donnie FL on there. I took the Donnie FL off, I was back in business, I was able to actually record those shots. Once you go past about five pumps, depending on your environment, um, I would say it's still backyard friendly, but if you had neighbors who were paying attention to what you're doing on a regular basis, they are going to notice and they are going to hear something. This moderator, which is one of the smaller ones Donnie FL offers, um, really takes that bark out and it'll take the bark out up to 15 pumps. And at 15 pumps, um, it's still rather quiet. On the chronograph testing we did today, the three pump and five pump shots, we had to do that without a moderator because it just wasn't loud enough to make the lab radar pick up. Once we got to seven, we put the Donny FL on and all the way up to 15, the lab radar worked fine and we weren't causing so much noise that we were gonna have any complaints. We're in the area I generally like to be where the rifle is really no more um, barky than the pellet is when it's hitting the backstop. So um, very easy to moderate this and it's awesome that it comes right from whatever retail you're going through um, with its own adapter so you don't have to pick that up as an extra expense. So there's a target downrange at 20 yards and we're going to do some accuracy testing. You're going to be watching the target through my spotting scope. I've got a Tacticam Spotter LR on there uh, showing you a close-up of wherever hit's going. Um, I'm going to be looking through this Leapers 3x9. I uh, chose this to pair up with the Dragonfly. It's a really nice combo, lightweight, inexpensive. And, and this is pretty important uh, for what I see this gun being really good for, it parallaxes down to about five yards. So you get three to nine, clear glass. Um, it is capped turrets. Normally I like to be able to make some adjustments, but that's not really what this gun is going to be doing. I see this as set up for more or less kind of short range out the back door, hit that squirrel off your bird feeder kind of shooting. So we're going to do a five shot group and as we go talk about a couple of the things I've learned as I've gotten to know this rifle. We're using the JSB 18, let's see if I can get you focus, 18.13 grain pellets. Um, seem to be performing really well in the air gun so no reason uh, not to use those. The trigger is on the long side. Um, I will, uh, I'll put some text on the screen to let you know kind of what that break weight is. Um, I've heard some people describe it as a two-stage trigger. Um, to me, and, and I haven't done any adjusting with it, I haven't done anything to it, I never really do before I uh, do a, a review. Um, to me, it's just kind of one of those long, Break, 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 okay, and then it breaks. Uh, not a problem at all when you're shooting off a bench like this, uh, using a front rest and a rear bag. And so the whole thing stays really stable through the whole shot cycle. Um, I could see where if you were off handing it and trying to shoot a squirrel where the head's going up and down, um, you'll wanna do some practice to get used to exactly where that breaks and how fast you can get it to break without uh, causing you difficulties with accuracy. Throughout my entire time with the air gun, I have used the single shot tray. It does have a magazine, uh, but since I'm stopping to pump it anyway, um, while I see the magazine as a plus if I were out in the field, um, here on the bench, it's just as easy to single load. You 
You do have variable power based on how many times you pump it. Um, and really the most, well, the biggest reason to get excited about this other than, hey, somebody's making a grown up multi-pump, um, but is that it doesn't change how hard it is when you pump one pump to the next. So it's no harder to pump it 11 times than it is seven. You just have to pump it four more times. Um, and that is really one of those things that, you know, it's nice to see, um, well, I guess a manufacturer's claim come true. That's four. One thing <laughs> that uh, I guess we'll make it two things. Uh, I can't talk while I'm pumping or I lose track of how many pumps I've put into it. Um, you also actually have to remember if you're single loading to load it. I have more than once pumped it, put the bolt forward and forgot to propel it in. And of course, all you get then is a puff of air. Not a big deal when you're plinking, but, uh, well, maybe it gives you a laugh while you're plinking. Not that you need more of those, but, uh, really nothing, uh, nothing to worry about and nothing that will happen if you're using the magazine, because of course you'll be probing the next one in on the magazine. All right, well, you guys have seen the five shot group. Um, got a little bit of a wind coming in today, not too bad. I might've moved that last pellet off to the right just a hair, uh, but for a you know 20 yard plinker um, at the price point that this comes in at, um, I think this is really a great backyard option and one that I would not uh, hesitate to recommend. I do have one thing to caution you about um, if you do pick this up. I, of course, like to keep everything on the backyard range as quiet as possible. Um, and usually that means adding on a uh, Donnie FL moderator. Uh, in this case, I had really great results from the FX branded um, Donnie FL. Um, I think you could also probably use either a Tonto or a Tatsu. I think it'd be a really good choice. Um, I would recommend going just over bore, uh, meaning if you've got, like I have the 22, go with the 2225. And if you pick up the 177, get the 177 22 size. Um, I did run into a little bit of frustration while I was shooting this, and I'm gonna share it with you in the hopes that you don't have this happen to you. Um, I started shooting and was getting really excellent groups. Um, you know, very much pellet, 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 you know, within what looked through the scope, well, not even when I was using iron sights before I put this scope on, uh, what looked like, you know, half inch variation, really minor. Um, and then just inexplicably, the group would open up after like the first three shots. If you've ever had that happen with a rifle, it's very frustrating because now you're like, okay, well, what's going on? It actually got to the point where I set the rifle down and I walked away from it for, for that day. That was just all the shooting I was going to do. Um, and would be detectives among you will probably notice uh, different shirts <laughs> and maybe even my hair being just a little bit uh, longer in, in one part of this. I don't have a great continuity guy. Um, I walked away from it for well, what turned into a week because I had work obligations. I didn't have time to get back to it. When I came back to the rifle, I looked down and I noticed that the 
moderator was actually, and actually it wasn't even the moderator, the adapter um, had come unthreaded. It was actually about halfway down the threads. Um, and I thought, God, did I take that off when I was, uh, when I was working on this? Did I take it off and clean the barrel? What, what I was trying to replay in my mind what I did. So um, I took it off and I put it back on, but this time I was paying attention to it. And um, this is what I discovered. Um, the adapter will back itself out while you're shooting. I put a little bit of uh, blue Teflon tape on it, the heavy duty blue stuff just two revolutions of Teflon tape, uh, screw it together and it hasn't bunched since. And I, and I have been shooting like this at, you know, 20 and 25, had a couple times where I shot steels at 25 yards. Um, that point of impact has not shifted at all. So if you're going to use the stock moderator or uh, rather the stock adapter that comes with it, which of course you should, right? There's no need to pay for something else when it comes with one. Um, and this does come with, a. Uh, uh, half inch UNF adapter um, but you're either going to want to put like I did Teflon tape because I, I was working on a compressor and I had I had it actually on the bench um, or you might want to try some Loctite to put that on uh, because it just seems like the the threading is just um, I don't want to say sloppy because it it doesn't go on sloppy um, but the the you know the the adapter and the barrel shroud uh, just really aren't biting together and so it needs something a little bit in there to help you out once I put that Teflon tape in there snugged it down not gorilla tight just snugged it down um, I had to readjust the scope and phew, off to the races no problem and you guys have seen the results I'm gonna let you in on a little secret I like shooting and uh well five shots of 25 is a nice group and it's fun and all I don't know that I think it's enough, so I'm going to throw this into, uh, like, fast motion for you guys. Uh, I may cut over just to the, the scope cam for you, or the, the spotter scope camera, but uh, we're going we're gonna to pump five more rounds down on this target. All right, there you go. At least a 10 shot. I might have might have pushed that out to 11. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, this is the 10 shot group that I took just before this one. Uh, normally I don't shoot multiple groups, but uh, having a little trouble with the Tacticam Spotter LR and um, it died halfway through the group. So I wanted to make sure I got you a full group on video so that's the official group right there well i'd like to thank all of you for watching my review of the seneca dragonfly mark ii multi pump without the sore shoulders <laughs> um, let me just run down what i would see as the features you get variable power based on how much you want to pump into it you get a gun that is just put a pellet in and through only your effort and no more equipment and no more expense, you get a gun that's ready to shoot. It's certainly accurate out to 20, 25 yards. Um, you've got, I would say a minute of squirrel accuracy as I shot it with the JSB 18.13 grains at 20 yards with seven pumps in it. Um, you can certainly go way up from there and you do get a really nice power curve. Um, the trigger is a little bit on the long side, um, and at least in mine doesn't come to what I would consider like, you know, that firm break point. It just kind of rolls through.
through the firing cycle. Um, not a heavy trigger pull by any means, um, but not match grade. You get all of this at a really affordable price, especially when you consider there isn't really anything else on the market that gives you what this has, um, you know, in terms of the adjustability of how fast it shoots, um, as well as, you know, there's no harsh brake barrel firing cycle, um, which is, uh, it just really helps some people shoot more accurately with less practice. Um, you know, who is this gun for? This is for your buddy who wants to get something to take care of chipmunks and squirrels in his backyard, uh, but doesn't want to buy a whole lot of accessory equipment. Um, you know, it still needs to be accurate. It can easily be made quiet. And if you're going to shoot it with, you know, three or five pumps, you don't need a moderator. Um, it's a very quiet gun at that point. You get above that, where I was shooting at seven pumps, people will notice if you're shooting. Um, if you got a huge backyard and nobody else around, you might not care. Uh, but if you are in a neighborhood and need to keep that noise down, it comes with an adapter for half UNF. You can put a Donny FL or any other moderator on there with that thread. Uh, you certainly don't need a big moderator to make a big difference with this air gun. With the adapter, uh, my advice is Loctite or a little bit of Teflon tape. Uh, because if it walks on you, you may find you start to get some very frustrating where did my accuracy go moments, and I'd like to be able to head that off for you. Uh, would I recommend this gun to a friend, coworker, or my boss? And the answer to that is yeah. Help them set it up, make sure the barrel gets cleaned, pick the right pellet for it, shoot it at different velocities to figure out where the accuracy is best at the distance they want to shoot for what they want to shoot it for, um, and you got yourself a winner in the Dragonfly Mark II. I appreciate you guys watching the video as always. I uh, appreciate the thumbs up and positive comments. Um, if you have questions about the rifle, I'll be keeping this one around for a while. So let me know and I'll try and get answers for you. Until the next video, everybody, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around.